Good morning, YouTube friends. Uh, I haven't posted in a while on uh, YouTube, but I'm going to go do a little video here today uh, to discuss reloading. Uh, I've been reloading for several years now, and I'm kind of showing you my little uh, recipe book, if you will, for reloading. And uh, we're going to follow this process today. A friend of mine has a brand new uh, Remington 700 uh, th in, in 308. And uh, we've got it broken in. We've been playing around with it. Uh, groups are not that great yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to play around with uh, different bullet uh, sizes or weights as well as uh, uh, different powder charges. So we're going to create a little uh, design of experiments. We're going to uh, take three different bullet types and four different powder charges for each based on the standard reloading manuals. I've used Nostler, Hornady, and Lyman manuals for that, as well as the Hodgdon and IMR online manuals. So I've got a baseline for four different powder charges, three different uh, bullet sizes. We'll be using 155 grain Hornady Amax, 168 grain Nos Nosler Spitzer, and then 175 grain Nosler Custom Competition. So we're going to go through the reloading process. I'll just go ahead and uh, videotape it, and I'll try to cut it and make it as quick, uh, quick and easy to bear as possible. But we're going to go through this process today on uh, uh, trying to do a uh, uh, workup or reload workup for a Remington 700 and 308. Okay, so according to the uh, reloading guide that I put together a long time ago, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the brass and we're going to sort it by brand. Uh, we've been shooting primarily American Eagle 150 grain 308 ammo to get the uh, barrel you know, broken in and settled in and seasoned. Uh, and then we started shooting some Fiocchi for a little more accuracy. So we're going to separate out the brass into uh, Fiocchi versus American Eagle. And then the next step we'll do is the uh, depriming and decapping. And we'll be using this simple generic uh, decapping die right here to do that. And I'll tape a little bit of that for your reference. Okay, to start out the process, uh, I don't like to try to do any, any resizing with uh, dirty brass. You know, even though this was just first, first run, still a little bit dirty, and I don't want to take any chances of uh, getting grit and grime in my resizing dies. So I'm going to use this Frankfurt Arsenal tumbler, and what I do is I always put in you know, about a tablespoon of the new finish. That, that actually gives it a nice shiny finish but also brass polish, which will clean it up real good. So I basically, before I start, will put a little bit of this chemical, these chemicals, these polishes in here. I've already shaken the, the bottles. And so, you know, I'm just putting a little bit of this polish in there, and then I'm going to run the tumbler for about four minutes, and that's going to be, you basically want to run it until all this stuff is mixed in. You don't want this gunk all over your brass. So, We'll mix all this stuff in, and, uh, and then we'll start working on uh, separating and decapping our brass. Okay, now we've got the uh, tumbler running, so it's basically just you know, getting all that, uh, those chemicals and, and polishes mixed in. In the meantime, we've sorted the brass. On the left, we've got the Federal American Eagle uh, brass, and on the right, we've got the Fiocchi brass. I have just enough of the Fiocchi brass to cover the exact design of experiments we're going to do. And to reiterate again, we're going to be using three different bullets, 155 grain Hornady Amax, 160 grain Nosler Spitzer, and 175 grain Nosler Custom Competition. So now we're going to go ahead and decap these, uh, go through the process of of uh, cleaning the um, cleaning the primer pocket, then we're going to go ahead and deburr the primer hole, and then we're going to do a real quick uh, cleaning of the case inside neck before it goes into the tumbler. Okay, it turns out we only had 47 of the Fiocchi brass, so we're going to go ahead and, and sort out the. Uh, we're going to deprime and clean, do the basic cleaning for the uh, Federal American Eagle brand brass. And then that'll go straight into the tumbler, and then we'll tumble that for between an hour and an hour and a half until they're nice and clean. Okay, so very simply, we're just going ahead and, and decapping the brass, deep priming, if you will, and then we're just putting them into this tray. And then I'm going to go ahead and take from this tray, and I'm going to go ahead and do the three-step cleaning here. I'm going to clean the primer pocket. We're going to deburr the inside of the primer hole, and then we're going to clean the inside of the neck with the... Uh, uh, basically just this, I'm not even sure what they call it, but just basically a brush. Okay, so now we're doing the basic initial cleaning. This is before polishing. So first station is basically cleaning the primer pocket, making sure we have a nice clean slot to, in, to, to install the primer later. 
Then we flip it over, we put it on the um, deburring tool, which basically is going to deburr the inside of the primer hole so that we get a nice clean uh, and consistent uh, primer spark into the gunpowder. And then lastly, we'll just put it over this brush and clean the neck a little bit, just to get some of the, the rougher stuff off the neck. Then we go straight into the uh, tumbler, which of course, this will tumble for about an hour and a half and these things will be spotless inside and out by the time it's done. Okay, so we finished decapping and uh, right now Brett is going through the process of uh, taking all of the federal uh, brass and going through the three-step cleaning and then right into the tumbler. So again, we'll finish this up, we'll throw those in the tumbler, and uh, then we'll basically go on to the next step. And now you can see here from my uh, recipe chart, or my, let's say my uh, process chart, uh, we, we're into phase number three where we're cleaning the primer pocket, uh, four we're doing the deburr of the flash hole, uh, and then we're doing the neck brush cleaning. And then of course number six, we're gonna do the tumbler. So effectively, uh, we're basically doing steps one through six today, and then I believe Thursday morning we're gonna come back and we'll do the neck size, the length trim, we'll weigh and sort the brass, and then we'll start going through the actual reload process. Okay, so the first set of uh, brass prepping is done. Uh, even the Fiocchi brass is now at least prepped and ready for the tumbler. But again, we've already sorted it, so we're going to keep tumbling uh, the uh, federal brass, and then once that's done, we'll plop in the uh, uh, Fiocchi brass and uh, get it tumbling, get it nice and clean. Uh, when the other brass comes out, we're going to go ahead and uh, start doing the rest of the prep, which basically will be neck sizing, trimming, uh, and then, of course, we'll get to this the point of actual reloading. Okay, so here is the Remington 700 AAC uh, SD with a 1 in 10 twist that we're going to be uh, making these reloads for. We're going to be trying to find a good workup load that we can uh, get good accuracy with. And the next step in our process, now that we've got the brass uh, you know, cleaning and, and uh, uh, right before we resize it, we've cleaned the bore or the uh, chamber only. We, we used a bore brush to clean the, uh, I'm sorry, a chamber brush to clean the chamber. And now we're going to basically go in there with this Hornady overall length gauge as well as the bullet comparator set. And we're going to basically figure out for each of the three bullet types what is the distance to the lands, uh, you know, what is the measurement from the, of the ogive to the lands in this rifle for the three different bullets. And then we're going to use that information to set up our bullet depth, seating depth in our reloads. Uh, we'll do that in a couple days, but for right now, we're going to get the measurements. Okay, so what we do is we start with the, we start with the uh, no tension on this uh, push rod. The, the bullet's actually seated pretty far into the uh, housing, into the brass. And now we're going to put it into the barrel, into the chamber. We're going to go until it actually bottoms out in the chamber. And now we're going to basically push this guide rod, this push rod, until we feel the bullet stop. The bullet is no longer moving. Then we're going to lock it in, slide it back out again, and now that's where the bullet depth is, just at the point of hitting the lands. And then we'll take our comparator, using our um, micrometer, and basically we're coming up in this case with a measurement of 2.1150 inches. That's to the ogive. Now, if we want to look and see what it is to the, to the tip, we can do that by having the tip hit the outside of the, uh, of the comparator. And it's at 2.7225. Uh, let's do that again. It's 2.7245. But the ogive is, again, get that measurement back. In this case, it looks like it's about... 2.1150, which is what we had before. Okay, so now we're going to take the uh, Nosler uh, 165 grain Spitzer, and we're going to do the same thing. So once again, we've we've recessed the bullet into the uh, brass. We're going to load the brass fully up into the 
chamber, make sure it make sure that the actual brass now is stopped where it needs to be in the chamber. Then we're going to push the bullet forward until it stops. Don't put too much pressure on it, just make sure it stops. That means it's touching the lands. The ogive of the bullet is touching the lands. Now we come back out again. That's our bullet depth on this one. And once again, we'll take the ogive length. And in this case, it's coming up to 2.1590. And then we'll do a quick check of the overall length. Again, different bullets, so it's gonna, it's gonna seat differently. And this one's coming up to 2.7570. And let me just try that a couple times. Yeah, 2.7570 roughly. Uh, again, we're well below the 2.800 maximum uh, case overall length, but we'll call it 2.7575 or 2.7570, 2.7570 overall length. Okay, so the uh, federal brass is now completed with the tumbler, and now we'll basically just pour the tumbler into this strainer here, uh, get all the excess uh, uh, abrasive materials off, and then uh, I'll pop in the uh, Fiocchi brass, and we'll get that started to get cleaned. Okay, we're back at day two now of our uh, reloading video. Uh, basically, what we've done so far as we've talked about is we've cleaned the brass. We've basically you know, done the cleaning part of the brass prep. What I just got done doing is I used a scale, and uh, basically with the scale, I weighed all of the federal uh, brass. And what I've done is I've divided up into basically three bins. I've got light, medium, and heavyweight, these three actually are part of this middle bin here. So effectively, we've got a fairly good mean weight, and we're going to start with these. We're going to reload these. Again, we're going to try and keep as many variables as possible out of the equation. So since we're going to be focusing on three different bullets and different powder charges, we want to try to minimize any other variability. So we're going to try to make sure these cases have the same weight, uh, have the same length, uh, and, and as much as possible, eliminate every variable. All of these have been fired through the uh, Remington 700 rifle that we're, that we're reloading for. They're all once fired, and they're all federal. So we, we've sorted them by weight, we've sorted them by manufacturer, and now we're going to go into the next steps of the reloading process, which in this case, because it's a bolt-action rifle, we're going to neck resize only. We're going to then trim, so I've got one of these... Uh, quick trim dies here. We're going to basically go ahead and trim the brass to try to keep it as the length as consistent as possible. And then we're going to go ahead and prime them. So uh, we'll tape some of that stuff here, but that'll give you an idea where we're headed next. And just to reiterate, uh, here's the checklist that I go by. Again, it's taken uh, several years to kind of come down to this uh, standard checklist that I use. Uh, we've completed number six. So we basically completed the tumbler cleaning. Uh, it took about an hour and a half and now we're at the point of getting to number seven and number eight. We'll do that today. Uh, I've already done number nine to get a preliminary idea of what uh, shells we're going, what brass we're going to use. Uh, so again, I've sorted them and weighed them. So I've kind of jumped ahead and done number nine, but we're going to back up now and go to steps seven and eight. The reason we're neck sizing is because if you look after these things have been fired once, if I take a brand new bullet and drop it on here, 
well, that one actually is okay, but if I drop it on here, it actually will, will sink into these. You see that there? It's actually sinking in to the, to the brass. So bottom line is the neck is too wide. I mean, it already shot one bullet out. We need to resize it so that it basically will, will secure the bullet. So we take this one that we just checked. We know the bullet is, is actually too, uh, I mean, too small. It actually fits inside that neck. We do a simple press to neck size it. Bring it back down. Now we'll check it again with a brand new bullet. And the bullet now does not fall in. And once we squeeze it in, it'll actually be held in and squeezed in by the friction uh, into that uh, open end of the brass. Okay, so we started out, as we said, by doing a neck size. Then we did a neck trim, basically chamfering the inner and outer surfaces as well as trimming the overall size of the case. Then we sorted them again. We had already pre-sorted them by weight, but now we've resorted them by weight. Our 48 primary uh, brass cartridges are here, and they're going to be used basically for our primary reloads. But we're going to also load up three of each at the lowest powder charge to use for just double checking our basic zero and uh, you know getting ourselves making sure we're on paper for when we start our actual test. So the next step now is we're going to we're going to put the primers in and then we'll start loading powder. Okay, with my Lee uh, dies and my Lee setup for for all of my uh, reloading, I've got this Lee primer uh, insert or whatever you want to call it. Really neat little setup. Uh, basically, you take this cover off here, and then basically you dump the primers into it. And we're going to need about uh, 60 primers, but basically I do this, I dump them like that, and you'll see that they're in all different orientations. And I'll dump some more on there because we need to get enough to cover what we're... going to be priming. And now, it's got this rough bottom here. And if I shake this around... All the primers orient themselves in the correct orientation. Then I put this cover on, click it or turn it until it uh, stops, and then I basically work them down into the feed mechanism, and they're ready to go. And you basically place it into this uh, arm that's on the die. And now basically the way this works is we'll take one of our cartridges, load it in, we'll raise it all the way up, and now we're going to actually get the primer to fall into this uh, primer insertion tool. Let me make sure this is proper here. Like that. Now you can see the primer's in there. Now we go down, it's going gonna, it's gonna to flip up underneath the shell. It's spring-loaded, so we're going to push all the way down, then release, and there's a nicely seated primer. Okay, now we're at my uh, powder charge bench, and that just basically is my uh, kitchen island, but we've got all the brass now sorted by weight, neck-sized, trimmed to length, and primed. So all of our brass is basically ready to be loaded with powder. Uh, we've measured the lengths, we've measured the weights, and uh, this batch on the left is going to be used for our primary uh, loads for the three different bullets. This batch on the right, we're going to build up just a few, maybe uh, three each of, the, uh, of each of the bullets to use for some basic uh, sighting rounds uh, before we start the actual uh, design of experiments to test the load performance. We're going to be using CFE223 powder. Uh, I like to, I, I'm not going to use a, the automated powder uh, measuring tool, but I can, I've got one, I can use it, but this is a very fine powder, so it makes a mess, and secondly, uh, it doesn't give me an accurate enough load, so I have to re-weigh it anyway. So, effectively, I'm going to weigh it here, double check it here, and then load the, 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 the cartridges. Now, before we do that, I'm going to mark each of the brass with black, blue or red because I'm color coding based on two different factors. 
which bullet it is. So the color will represent which bullet we're using. And we talked about the three different bullets we're going to be uh, testing. And then we're going to use a single line, double line, triple line, quadruple line to represent which powder charge. So everything will be color coded on the brass. So we'll be able to keep track of what we've got at the range. And uh, so that's basically it. So let me uh, pause this for a second. We'll do our first I'm going to do my scale check, make sure everything's measuring correctly, and then we'll go ahead and do our first couple of uh, loads on video so you can see us do it. Uh, but effectively, it's a fairly simple but fairly manual process. Okay, so here's my basic setup. I, I basically have my powder in a cup, solo cup. I've got the uh, measure that basically amounts to getting me about 48.5 grains per scoop I'm going to use my first scale, which is a Frankfurt Arsenal scale, and I get pretty close. I'll try to get to 48.5 or very close to 48.5. But because I want these to be precision loads, I'm going to then go and put them onto another scale, which actually measures down to the hundredths of a grain. And I'm going to tweak it from here. So now I'm a little high, so I got my small little scoop. I'm going to take a scoop out of there. Of course, that knocked it low, which is fine, but now I'm going to start knocking some powder off and try to get that up right up to 48.5, or at least within a, you know, a couple hundredths of very delicate operation to, to get it right on. I'm just dropping like a couple of grains of powder at a time. And eventually we'll get to 48.5. Very close. I back away and make sure it settles. Not quite there yet. Again, I'm just tapping this to get a grain or two out of there. It's right on the edge of flipping. Now, sometimes the scale won't measure that slight change, so I'll actually lift this up for just a second and then drop it back down and, and let it take a new fresh measurement. And it's still the same, so 48.48. Try and drop a little more powder onto there. And again, 48.52, I'm shooting for 48.5, that's good enough. So uh, again, we're going to now load that into our empty cartridge that's been primed. And then move over to the next one, and we'll repeat the process. Cool. Okay, so we've uh, taken the powder, we've measured it once, measured it twice, placed it into the uh, brass the primed brass. And now we've got our first group done, the, the black group. We're going to be doing these in black, blue, and red to keep track of which bullet is which. This is the 155 grain Hornady Amax. So now we're going to take this batch out and we're going to seat bullets. Uh, and right now we're going to seat the bullets to a depth of 2.0950 inches, which is the uh, two hundredths off of the lands. Okay, so now we are seeding the bullets, which are the uh, 30 cal Hornady Amax 155 grain. And we've already done a few, but we're seeding these all to an ogive depth of 2.0950 inches, which is actually two hundredths off of the uh, 20 thousandths, if you will, off of the lands, uh, which again is a good starting point for an initial load. And all of these are going to be uh, seated the same depth. So what we're doing is we're, we're keeping consistent bullets, consistent brass. The only thing changing is the powder charge. So now we're, we're seating them all to the same depth. And I've got my Hornady uh, bullet seating die. But I also, as you notice, I've got the vernier. I've got the nice vernier uh, adjustment tool, which makes it really nice to get a precision uh, placement or a precision depth for your bullet. I go down nice and gentle, nice and slow until I hit bottom. 
I'll take a quick measurement and I'll see how close I am. I may go just a little further, but I don't like to overshoot. So there I'm at 2.0980 to the ogive. Not quite where I want to be. I'm going to try to get within five thousandths on it. Probably a little bit overkill, but... So I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to press a little past the bottom just to seat it a little bit further and hopefully get in that ballpark. There we go. 0.0955, which I'm trying, I'm shooting for 0 0.0950, uh, but I'm pretty happy with, with plus or minus five thousandths. Okay, now following all the steps that we talked about, we're done. You can see three distinct groups of ammo. We've got the 155 grain Hornady Amax, the 165 grain Nos Nosler Spitzer, and then the uh, uh, 175 grain Nosler Custom Competition. They're all loaded. Uh, we basically have practice rounds. Then we have our lowest load, next highest load, next highest load, and our max loads. And so again, we're going to do uh, at the range tomorrow, we'll do our shooting and we're going to follow a basic round robin procedure and we're going to log our muzzle velocities for all these and uh, we'll try to show you what that looks like when we get some shots down range and hopefully we're going to find some uh, load and bullet combination that this uh, Remington 700 likes. Now before we continue with the reloading, I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about philosophy and remember we're dealing with uh, a goal here of creating a low cost, an entry level, uh, long range precision LRP type rifle. So what we've got again is this uh, Remington 700 factory uh, rifle. It's an AACSD in 308, and so that's what we're reloading. And again, what I was finding when I was doing my research online is that there were two key complaints about the uh, accuracy of this of this uh, gun of this rifle. And the two complaints were the the trigger is too heavy and that the barrel is not free floating properly even though it's designed to free float so what people have done which ends up costing a lot of money is people have replaced the trigger with a Timney trigger to get down closer to the two and a half to three pound ideal pull, pull weight this one here is claimed to be adjustable by Remington but we've played with it and everybody I've seen online did the same thing we can't get it below about four and a half pounds it's typically around four pounds eleven ounces so it's a pretty heavy trigger and uh, also when we first checked for the free float and you can see the dollar sitting in there when we first checked for it it would not slide the dollar and it was definitely touching the barrel and we have noticed that with most ammo we've tried several different uh, grades of factory ammo uh, we did not have uh, better than about an inch and a half to two inch group. Uh, we had one uh, set of Fiocchi ammo that we got a really nice maybe three quarter inch group but we couldn't repeat it so effectively as we go for the reloading we're trying to optimize the performance of the gun but we want to keep it stock we don't want to change a lot of things so what we've done is the the we've honed out with the sandpaper uh, around the barrel uh, on the stock it's a laminated you know uh, uh, stock and now the dollar bill goes in there and we've got some clearance uh, even when it's resting on its bipod before when it was resting on the bipod the dollar bill would not slide on there we've not done anything with the trigger and then the other thing to keep this thing a, a low cost and you can look at my other videos but we are using the Athlon Argos front focal plane scope so we've got a really good scope on it. It's got its limitations, but it's an entry-level scope. We have added the zero stop. So if you look at my video on how to put in a zero stop, uh, a, a very inexpensive zero stop on this, we've done that. So we've got a zero stop in here, and we've got a front focal plane scope capable of long-range precision. And we've actually taken this thing uh, and, and got it all honed in and tested, but now we've got to basically do reloads try to find the optimal reload for this configuration and then we'll take it out to the long range and see what we can do alright 620 a.m. on Friday the 29th of September 2017 and we are about to begin the uh, load testing for the Remington 700 AACSD in 308 uh, we built up our rounds, we've got our targets ready, we've got the lower targets to do some quick checks on our zero, and then we got the upper targets to do all of our round-robin load testing.
Okay, we're just finalizing zeroing with some factory ammo, and uh, this is the way the test is going to run. We've got the black targets, four shots, that'll be uh, the 155 grain Hornady AMAX. The blue targets will be the uh, 165 grain Nossler Spitzler, Spitzer, and then the red targets will be the 175 grain Nossler Custom Competition. So uh, we'll be going around in kind of a round robin fashion back and forth. Uh, getting four shot groups in each and hopefully we'll start to see some trends that will let us know how this uh, uh, Remington 700 rifle is is handling different types of ammo and different types of powder load okay shooting is complete and we've pretty much confirmed at least with this Remington 700 it does not like the 155 grain bullets at all you can see that uh, even with the different powder charges uh, the black ones here were the 155 grain Hornady AMAX and they're pretty much all over the place I mean they're they're grouping but they're grouping in you know ridiculous you know two and three inch uh, groups we come to the 165 grain Nossler and the groups tighten up they're not great but this is our best one right here 46 grains of CFE 223 uh, and again, I, I don't have it in front of me, but we seeded these things to the uh, two, uh, 20 thousandths off the lands. Uh, so, so that's what we, we ended up doing here. But that's our best group. This one had some promise because two, hole, two shots go into one hole, but then we're a little bit off here. So again, unfortunately, the 165 grain looks decent, but not great, but, it, but it's certainly a, a step in the right direction. And then the 175 grain Nossler, again, just not really grouping very well except for this one. But we have really a bad group when we go half a grain of powder hot higher and an average group when we go half a grain of powder lower. So in effect, I'd be reluctant to use this as my as my target point because I'm not sure if this is even a good group and it doesn't have any leeway uh, one way or the other. So we're going to focus on this group here which did, by the way, have a very good standard deviation on the muzzle velocity. So we're going to focus on this group and see what kind of variation we can do with this as a starting point. So we'll vary the bullet depth and we'll vary the powder charge up and down from this starting point and try to see if we can't fine-tune this group a little bit more. Uh, that's it for this whole uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing what I do for reloading and how I test the reloads. Uh, I know everybody has some different uh, opinion on how to do things, and I'd be happy to read your comments in the uh, area below. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.